I think that I've always known, and it's more of a question of when did I own that leadership? Um, because I can definitely remember as a small child, like my friends, I would be the delegate, like, let's ask Regina, what should we do? Or we're in trouble, Regina can come up with an answer for us. Um, or something went wrong, Regina, what am I supposed to do here? Even in my own family, that would happen. I'm the baby of the family. And I, my elder siblings would always be like, what are we supposed to do? Um, and then into, and even again, as a child being at church, my, my family was very involved in church and we were there every Sunday, Wednesday night Bible study, Saturday, uh, Saturday school at church. Um, but I always had questions and I always wanted to understand why. Um, and no one else, would ask those questions but then after class my friends would be like I wondered the same thing why do we do this uh, and so I think always in retrospect I can say it's always been there but it wasn't until I would say my mid-20s and being a parent and just kind of, kind of being out there in the world that I realized like no I must be a leader because I'm doing things that seem natural to me but other people are like, oh, that's amazing. Oh, we're going to follow you. Or, oh, we want to do what you're doing. So it's, it wasn't, it was more of the ownership of it. And that happened in my mid-20s, I think. Um, instantly, the scene came to mind. And again, I was in elementary school, I'm sure. But I'm with my mother and my sister, and my mom's car wouldn't start. And they both looked at me and said, what are we supposed to do? What are we going to do now? And I remember in that moment thinking like, I don't know. But I also had a level of recognition in that moment. Like for some reason, people always ask me for solutions. I don't know why that memory stands out, but it does. And when I read that question, that's the first thing that I thought of. Um, definitely there are people like Toni Morrison and James Baldwin. I was an avid reader as a child and really believe that um, at that time we're in, the, uh, we're in a Columbus Public Library right now, a Columbus Library now at the main branch. But at that time the Northern Lights branch was on Cleveland Avenue in Northern, and actually in Northern Lights. Um, and we would go there all the time. We spent so much time there. And I first read James Baldwin, like in the third or fourth grade. Um, I read Frederick Douglass in fifth grade. So I was always an avid reader. And those types of authors, African American authors, especially women, really, uh, like, I feel like saved my life in so many ways as a young girl. Uh, so definitely those type of authors but where I am now as a 46 year old, my heroes are my daughters. My daughters inspire me. I have one that's 23 and one that will be five in a few weeks. And they really continue to push me, to save me from myself, to inspire me, to motivate me. And when I think about who my heroes are, it's my daughters. is creating, creating anything. Um, so I also grew up always making something. My grandmother was a very creative person. And so during the summer, we always had some sort of two to three month long art project that we worked on all summer long. Uh, and that also throughout the year, we were always building something, making something, using our hands for something. I always loved art. Um, and I'm still a very creative person, so you will find me making, making, making culinary, you know, a meal, making, uh, when my daughter, my youngest daughter was born, I made toys for her, handmade toys. I was like, I don't want to be the mom that buys stuff, I said, I'll do something different this time around, and I made most of her toys. Um, so I just really enjoy, if we need something, can I make that? 
can I cobble something together to produce that? So I really love to create. That would be my favorite hobby. That I am an artist and that I am very creative. I have awards for, I've won awards for some of my art. Uh, so I did a, I created a commercial that was aired on TV um, really because of my art. So that creative side is often lost when I talk to people about history and doing data and working with data and that type of thing and data analysis. Um, the fact that I'm an artist that thinks in colors, uh, I sometimes if there's a tough situation in front of me, everyone else may be in chaos, but I'm thinking about colors and that's how I come up with solutions. Uh, a lady or a girl then, Erica Evans, was my childhood best friend. We grew up together. Her aunt was my babysitter. Um, so we, we called her Aunt Ruby. Um, and Erica was, we grew up friends slash cousins and definitely was my best friend. We went to the same church. And, My favorite form, that's very tough because I like to do it all. Um, I like to create, I like to use paint. I like to work with textiles myself. But what I enjoy most and I'm terrible at is music. So I love music. I have no musical talent. I can't play an instrument. Um, I can't read music at all. I never could. But I love music, all kinds of music. Another tough one, because we're here in Columbus, the home of Jenny's, and there are so many, like it's hard to pick one, but um, back into a corner, mango. <laughs> mango ice cream, mango sorbet would be my favorite flavor. My favorite quote is, know thyself. Uh, and because that to me is the foundation of everything. Knowing who you are and not just our physical, not just the physical form that we have, but who we are deep within, um, who we are spiritually and who our consciousness is and knowing what we're connected to by having that knowledge. Know thyself is key to me right now. Right now, my life mantras show up as hashtags. Uh, so you may see me use hashtag the universe is for me, uh, hashtag I am so in love with me, and hashtag know thyself. Um, so really, those are my mantras in believing that everything exists, including myself. Everything was created to be successful. Everything exists to produce. And I am part of that. I am designed to be successful. The universe exists to fulfill me just like I exist to fulfill the universe. That's a tough one. Being a history major and understanding the role of president, that's a tough one to answer. Um, if I were president of the United States right now, I would implement reparations for African Americans <laughs> whose ancestors were enslaved here in the United States. I do have superpowers, um, so I'll just say that first. We all do. We all have superpowers. 
and I believe my superpower is the power of creativity not just to create a beautiful picture but to really create the person that I want to be to create the universe that I want to live in and when I say universe I mean like the family that I want to live in the community I want to live in I do have the power to do that and it most definitely is a superpower that we all have and have to use carefully. I'm so in love with me right now. Um, <laughs> that is a difficult one. I don't think I would change anything about the who, uh, and I don't think that we can. So I, I, that's not um, that's not something that I would try to change. But what I would like to change is where I physically reside. So right now I physically reside in Columbus, Ohio, and I want to reside in Ghana. And so I am working actively to manifest that. I love, what I love most about myself is my willingness to have uncomfortable conversations and to ask the difficult questions that no one else will ask. And that has often made me unpopular, um, but that's also tied to my leadership. And I just love that about me because to me it, it, it represents my authenticity and also demonstrates one that I'm a thinking human being and that I'm not just going along with whatever anyone says um, but that I'm thinking and I'm actively engaged in my life and that I do have some standards and some parameters so some things I may just okay I just don't agree with that and I'm not I don't have to say anything but also there comes a time I think when we are called to stand up for what we believe in and that is represented in my willingness to have difficult conversations and to ask questions that other people won't.